I'm just going to say it. I'm not a fan of EVs, but I am a fan of car history and electric vehicles are a part of automotive history. So I made a video about the full history of EVs. Hope you enjoy it. Before you think the electric vehicle movement is inevitable, consider this. Only one and a half percent of all vehicles on the road are electric. While we are experiencing a rise in EV technology, this isn't the first time. Electric cars have been around for over a hundred years. Their history dates back to the early 19th century when inventors and engineers began to experiment with electric propulsion as an alternative to internal combustion engines. And each time, the evolution of electric cars has been marked by periods of innovation, rise, and then decline. The history of the EV is a great story. Why does it go from extremely popular to suddenly disappearing from our roadways again and again? And is this the time it will finally stick? This is the electrifying history of the electric car. No one is sure who invented the first electric car, but there have been a few who've been given credit throughout history. In 1828, a Hungarian inventor named Anjos Jedlik invented a small electric motor. And somewhere between 1832 and 1839, Robert Anderson from Scotland created an electric-powered carriage. Then, in 1835, an American blacksmith named Thomas Davenport created a small-scale electric car. Davenport also invented the first American DC electric motor. But it wasn't until 1897, when Albert Pope created the Columbia Motor Carriage, that things really started to take off. It's considered to be the first mass-produced electric car in the United States. People loved the car so much that at one point, they actually outsold gasoline-powered vehicles for a short time. Two years later, in 1899, a Belgian engineer named Camille Genazzi designed an electric race car called La Jamais Contente. It set a world record for land speed of 68 miles an hour. Early electric cars used lead acid batteries. They were cheap, but they didn't hold a charge for very long. Gasoline powered engines, on the other hand, could go much farther on a tank of gas. But at the time, those who had electric vehicles were content as they didn't have long commutes. They were affordable and were the same if not better than gasoline or steam-powered engines. Car manufacturers tried to market electric cars to women because they were clean and quiet. Gas-powered engines were dirty and needed to be cranked by hand to get the motor started. But at the time, most drivers were men, so fewer and fewer people were willing to buy electric cars. But as longer roads were being built and the desire to travel longer distances was growing, the popularity of EVs started to fade and the discovery of oil in Texas made it cheaper to refuel gasoline-powered cars. Plus, when Henry Ford was pumping out his Model T in 1908, pricing it more affordably for families to purchase a gas-powered car compared to an electric one, it pretty much put the nail in the electric vehicle coffin. In 1914, Henry Ford and Thomas Edison did team up in an attempt to make an affordable electric car, but it didn't work. They couldn't get past the issue with the batteries and they quickly gave up. And all of these factors left electric cars to become dusty old museum pieces. No one could have predicted that EVs would make a big comeback decades later. For decades, as America's love affair with the automobile kicked into high gear throughout the 50s, people drove gas-powered vehicles without a care in the world. It wasn't until recent history that people began to realize that cars create smog in the atmosphere. For every gallon of gas we burn, it adds 19 pounds of carbon dioxide in the air. And climate change became a hot-button topic, and suddenly people cared about saving the environment. Over the years, there were a few attempts to introduce EV concept cars that were amazing and hilarious at the same time. In the mid-60s, a few battery electric concept cars appeared, such as the Scottish Aviation Scamp, and a whole host of concept cars that looked really futuristic. None of them entered production. The 1973 Einfield 8000 did make it into small-scale production. 112 were eventually produced. In the late 1960s, 
AMC developed a new battery based on lithium to power an all-electric 1969 Rambler American station wagon. And then there's my favorite experimental plug-in, the Amatron. In the 1970s, the oil crisis had people looking for alternative modes of transportation. So there were electric vehicles like the City Car and the Zagato Zeely. However, their batteries hadn't improved much at all, so their comeback didn't last long. And all of these goofball concept cars made the EV market feel like a joke, especially the Sunny Racer by GM in 1987, which ran on solar power. Needless to say, none of these made it to market. But something changed in 1990, when the California's Air Resources Board decided to encourage all automakers to come out with their own electric vehicles. To force change, the California Air Resources Board came up with the Zero Emissions Vehicle Program beginning in 1990. This regulation demanded that, in just a few years, 10% of all new car sales in California would need to be electric cars. As you can imagine, this mandate was not popular among automakers, and later they would decide to fight it in court. But in January 1990, at the LA Auto Show, GM Chairman Roger Smith introduced the GM Impact, an electric concept car. The car was powered by 32 lead-acid rechargeable batteries and could reach a top speed of 183 miles an hour. But what was significant was a few months later, when Roger Smith announced that that impact would actually become a production car, with a goal of 25,000 vehicles. Impressed with the viability of this impact car, and motivated by GM's intent to produce the impact, the California Air Resources Board moved on to a larger environmental initiative ruling that each of the U.S.'s seven largest car makers, of which GM was the largest, would be required to make 2% of its fleet emission-free by 1998, 5% by 2001, and 10% by 2003, in accordance with consumer demand in order to continue to sell cars in California. The board stated the mandate was intended to combat California's poor air quality, which at the time was worse than the other 49 states combined. Other members, such as Toyota, Nissan, and Honda, each also developed a prototype zero emissions vehicle in response to the new mandate. But it was GM that wanted to be first in on this new race. So in 1994, GM began a program called Preview, whereby 50 hand-built impact electric cars would be lent to drivers for periods of one to two weeks under the agreement that their experiences would be logged. Volunteers had to own a garage where a high-current charging unit could be installed by an electric company. They were expecting at most 80 volunteers in the Los Angeles area, but were flooded with close to 10,000 people calling in. In New York City, 14,000 callers responded before the lines were closed, and driver response to the cars was favorable, as were reviews by the automotive press. Motor Trend said, the impact is precisely one of those occasions where GM proves beyond any doubt that it knows how to build fantastic automobiles. This is the world's only electric vehicle that drives like a real car. And Automobile Magazine called the car's ride and handling amazing, praising its smooth delivery of power. However, according to a front page article in the New York Times, they said that within the halls of General Motors, GM was less than pleased with the prospect of having developed a successful electric car. They said that General Motors is actually preparing to put its electric vehicle act on the road and planning for a flop. And it made sense, too. A mass-market electric car would disrupt everything. And all of this felt like a charade put on to show a big spectacular failure. According to a GM report, the preview program was a failure, and evidence that the electric car was not viable and they asked that the regulations be withdrawn. Robert James Eaton, the chairman of Chrysler, also questioned whether the market was ready for electric cars. The negative positions taken by the automakers were criticized by the Commissioner of Environmental Conservation, which had adopted the California Emissions Program. They said consumers had demonstrated tremendous interest in electric cars, but automakers didn't want to render obsolete their multi-billion dollar investment in internal combustion engine technology, downplaying their ability to make it happen and demand. But it didn't stop General Motors. 
In 1996, General Motors came out with a big swing at cornering the electric market with the release of the EV1. The EV1 would be powered by lead-acid batteries and had a range of 70 to 100 miles. 660 cars were produced. It was available only to lease, not own, and it was the first mass-produced and all-purpose designed electric vehicle of the modern era from a major automaker and the first GM car designed to be an electric vehicle from the onset. It was incredibly popular among those who leased the car. Celebrities like Mel Gibson and Tom Hanks drove the EV1 and made sure to go on the talk show circuit talking about how amazing it was. For a brief moment in the 90s, it seemed as though electric vehicles were going to have a huge comeback. But the powers that be didn't want this to happen. Oil companies began to pay for articles claiming that the benefits of electric cars for the environment were dubious. Then, automakers sued the California Air Resources Board to remove the mandate for electric vehicles. And this is where things get weird. You see, if the automakers wanted to drop the zero emissions vehicle program, automakers would have to prove that there was no demand for the cars. If they could prove no one wanted to buy them, they were off the hook for meeting that 10% requirement. So car companies claimed that there were no customers, except that wasn't true. There was a waiting list of nearly 5,000 people who wanted to buy the car. And this is where things got weirder. Dropping a bomb into the electric vehicle race, President George W. Bush then awarded $1.2 billion in research funding for hydrogen-powered cars. It was a complete zigzag in the auto industry. The issue with the hydrogen power was that the oil industry was behind the development of the hydrogen vehicle. So when you look a little bit closer, you realize that the hydrogen car is never going to come to the mass market. First of all, the average hydrogen car costs about a million dollars to produce, and there's not enough room in the car to store fuel for long range driving. And it's more expensive to fuel with hydrogen than gasoline. And this turmoil was all General Motors needed to hear by 2001, General Motors began dismantling their electric vehicle division. Those who had leased the EV1 were told that they had to give it back and were not given an option to renew their lease. Other automakers began following in GM's footsteps by removing their electric cars from their product lines. Electric car owners organized and began to protest, pleading with GM to let them purchase the EV1. But their pleas were ignored. GM wanted the cars destroyed with no chance of them ever being seen on the roads again. The EV1s were gathered up and taken to the GM Proving Grounds in Mesa, Arizona, where they were crushed and ground up into tiny bits, discarded like trash. Other car manufacturers began doing the same thing with their vehicles. As a result of this, in 2003, California removed its electric car mandate. That same year, the U.S. government gave a $4,000 tax break to people who bought electric vehicles, but they gave up to 100,000 in tax breaks to people who bought SUVs. Clearly, the administration was on the side of the oil industry, and they were far too powerful to compete with. Another alternative that gave people hope was the hybrid car. Just like the electric car, hybrids had been around for a long time. The first hybrid car was made by Porsche in 1899, called the System Loaner Porsche Mixed, which used gasoline engine to supply power to an electric motor. Then, after the oil embargo in 1973, the crisis caused the price of oil to skyrocket, so billions of dollars were put into research on improving hybrid cars. In 1997, Toyota released their Prius in Japan, and it would come to the United States in 2000. Even though the Honda Insight was released in 1999, the Prius would become the most popular hybrid in the world, and certainly in America. Prius became synonymous with hybrid, and it became ingrained in popular culture. As time went on, they developed a plug-in Prius hybrid, which extended how far it could drive on electricity. The Toyota Prius has managed to stay in the game all these years, and many people think it's the car that ushered in what came next, the Tesla. Just a few years after California repealed its electric car mandate, electric cars would be revived when Elon Musk met Martin Eberhard and Mark Tarpening. They were developing their own electric car, which ran on lithium-ion batteries. 
These were lighter and more powerful, making it possible for electric cars to go on much longer on a single charge. The three of them came together to incorporate Tesla Motors, and Elon Musk became the CEO. Since then, he's been the face of the company and a symbol of the future of electric vehicles. By 2008, they released their first car, the Tesla Roadster to consumers. This proved that electric cars could be both stylish and high-performance vehicles, unlike any that had come before. But with a $100,000 price tag, the car wasn't accessible to the average consumer. As time went on, Tesla came out with more affordable models, like the Model S, X, Y, and 3. And Tesla became incredibly popular, selling nearly 5 million cars since it was founded. Love them or hate them, you can thank Elon Musk for today's EV movement. Because of Tesla, other automakers began releasing electric cars to keep up with the competition. In 2024, there are over 40 different EV models out there to choose from across various car brands. No matter where your brand loyalty lies, you should have an EV model to choose from. So, why is there suddenly an electric car movement? One of the big factors is climate change. Obviously, no one was thinking about that when they first started driving electric cars 100 years ago, but now people are more concerned about the environmental footprint, and they're willing to put their dollars towards helping to save the planet. But there's something more. Younger, more techie customers seem to be mixing the environmentally conscious vibe with smart technology. And just like they see their iPhones as an extension of their life, they're comparing EVs to that same smart technology as their smartphones. Younger generations growing up with technology aren't as excited about the purr of a V8, but they like an iPad-like screen on their car dashboard. To them, an EV is like a toy. An older generation of car lovers who truly love a timeless classic car and who like to work on the engine under the hood may find it nearly sacrilegious to see their favorite car go EV. Case in point, the 2024 Ford Mustang Mach-E. But we can't ignore the trend. In 2012, there were just 100,000 EVs on the road in the United States. By 2021, that number jumped to 2 million in the United States and 26 million worldwide. Around the world, people are adopting the electric car, and they are taking over a significant chunk of the roadways. There is some debate as to whether the electric vehicles are actually better for the environment or not. For example, the lithium needed for an electric car battery needs to be mined, and it produces more CO2 in the atmosphere than the production of an internal combustible engine vehicle. On top of that, electricity on the grid comes from power plants fueled by coal, which is also negatively affecting the atmosphere. For over 100 years, the electric car has seen its evolution and near extinction. But like a phoenix that rises from the ashes, the EV has seen a major comeback. In 2022, consumers spent $400 billion on electric vehicles around the world. It's projected that by 2030, the United States will have 26 million electric vehicles on the road. Only time will tell how far this electric car revolution will go, or if it's just another wild story. And look, there's been a lot of crazy stories and scandals in the automotive industry. And if you're interested in going down that rabbit hole, take a look at these two videos right here, one on the wild but true car myths, and the other on scandals that rock the automotive world. And you can watch both of those videos right here, right now. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you'll always be aware of my future videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.